Dream Chaser might be dead. Everybody's favourite baby shuttle has been facing serious challenges over the past few years, and an announcement from NASA might have just sealed the deal on if this spacecraft will ever fly to the International Space Station. The American Space Agency has all but cancelled the contract with Sierra Space, ditched the confirmed seven resupply flights, and switched up Dream Chaser's demonstration from an ISS docking to a free flyer. So you might be wondering, just how did we get in this strange situation in the first place? The idea of Dream Chaser itself started in the early 2000s, with a design derived from NASA's HL-20 concept from the 90s. Following an acquisition, it fell into the hands of Sierra Nevada Corporation in 2008, who proposed it for the commercial crew program, and even received some seed money from NASA under CC Dev Phase 1, CC Dev Phase 2, and CCI Cap which were basically different stages of commercial crew development. But Dream Chaser fell at the fourth hurdle, as NASA went with SpaceX and Boeing with Dragon and Starliner respectively. Following an unsuccessful protest of the contract with the US Government Accountability Office, Sierra Nevada proposed Dream Chaser for NASA's Commercial Resupply Services 2 contract, which is the contract Cargo Dragon and Cygnus operate within today. This proved more successful, with NASA committing to a minimum of seven flights, resupplying the International Space Station with cargo and commodities. They even flew a successful approach and landing test in 2017, using an engineering test article, giving us a brief glimpse into a future of seeing commercial winged spacecraft returning to Earth. However, as aerospace goes, the timelines started slipping. The first mission to the ISS, scheduled for 2021, slipped to 2022, then 2023, then to 2024. But at this point, things actually started looking good. The media were even invited to take a look at the first vehicle, DC-101 Tenacity, while it was undergoing testing in Ohio prior to it arriving at the Kennedy Space Center that May. Tenacity arrived, and then silence. Oddly prolonged silence. The date slipped to 2025, with still no real word of what was going on. Questions were asked at press conferences to somewhat empty responses. We haven't heard much about Dream Chaser. Do you have any update on where they're at with reviews and when we might finally see that fly to the station? Um, we still have some of our integrated safety reviews to do, and we're in the process with updating both of our schedules to try to understand where does that really put us. And so Sierra's working on that, and so I need to wait and just get information back from them to see where they think some of that work lines out. But we are looking forward to having them flying. Time was ticking because, in case you missed the memo, there's only five more years left of the International Space Station, and that's not a lot of time to squeeze in the original seven missions. So, while disappointing, NASA's announcement is not entirely surprising. They've mutually agreed to modify the contract, remove the seven guaranteed flights, and scale back Tenacity's demonstration mission to just be a free flyer in Earth orbit, launching no earlier than late 2026. So probably 2027. But what are some of the potential reasons for modifying the contract in such a way? Well, Sierra Space, as they're now known, are clearly going through some difficulty with getting this vehicle off the ground. NASA potentially could have been concerned that they wouldn't have all the required certifications in time for a flight in the near future. There's also the possibility that Sierra really wants to fly Dream Chaser to gather data and learn, but gathering data and learning in close proximity to the orbiting lab didn't go down well with NASA. Regardless, we don't really know for sure. It's not a question I want to ask, but will Dream Chaser survive? NASA has essentially said we might potentially maybe ask for a resupply mission to the ISS if we feel like it. But with Dragon and Cygnus holding down the fort for 15 years now, it's not exactly promising. There are commercial space stations in development, Sierra Space themselves are developing hardware for Orbital Reef, but again, it's another project in a future which is looking ever more uncertain by the day. Even if it doesn't get to fly to a space station, fingers crossed this fan favourite does fly, even if that flight is being delayed yet again. I've been Ryan Caton for NSF, thanks for watching, and goodbye.